Hello, uh, welcome to Stories of Resilience uh, with Writing Relations. Uh, this is a series where we meet with people from different walks of life um, who have shared our valuable experiences, wisdom, and reflections on what work is needed to build a path towards a heart-led radical social change. Uh, so my name is Miriam Sanuap, and I am the member of the West Hub of Writing Relations. So this year, is the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And however, like we see that there's still many struggles that continue to confront our local and global communities while we have international human rights law and foundations to guide us. Uh, we have a long way to go to actualize these rights and bring peace to our communities and world. So the rates of hate and intolerance are growing and Poverty is deepening, and Canadians are now only beginning to reckon with our deep history of genocide. And so our commitment to advance human rights globally uh, from December 1st to the 10th of 2023, uh, the John Humphrey Centre for Peace and Human Rights, in partnership with Writing Relations, will host Ignite Change. Um, it's a global convention that will host a series of online and in-person events to bring together civil society, academics and decision makers in dialogue, learning and action on human rights. So these 10 days will provide, um, will profile and facilitate uh, public discourse on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and also its 75th anniversary, as well as strengthen collective action and commitment to human rights. So Writing Relations is a growing national network uh, that strives to support and build, um, uh, build capacity amongst adult educators and community organizers. And so we provide space and resources for them to connect and reflect on and organize for hard-led social change and build a just Canada. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, you can actually check out our web um, at writingrelations.org. And so today, as guest, uh, we have Sue Dungere. Dungere. <laughs> okay, so Sue um, has been a strong voice for environmental social justice and upholding of Indigenous and treaty rights for many years. Uh, she has worked nationally, provincially, and locally, and internationally in these areas. Uh, Sue is a co-founder of Mother Earth Justice Advocates and is currently a member of Indigenous Climate Action and also a co-chair of Keepers of the Water and member of Writing Relations. She has a passion for the unity of all peoples and the protection of Mother Earth. She has four children, four grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren uh, motivate her to strive for a better world. So Sue, this is the part where I'm going to ask you some, qu some questions. Uh, so the first questions that, that I want to know is like, how did you come to being a human rights defender? Okay, now I have to be honest. This <laughs> This question stumped me, and there's people in this room that helped me work through it, and I'm really glad to see people I know here. Like I was sharing earlier, I'm going to be 70 next year, and sometimes I don't even remember why I go in the kitchen or I go into the living room or to the bedroom, and I, how the heck am I going to remember when I started when I was 16 and I'm 70 how I started? I don't know. I, I know I knew something was wrong. I, I've written poems most of my life and I found an old poem, not recently, but it hit me and it, it looked like younger writing. I don't know how old I was, maybe 11, 12. And it talked about society wasn't right. It wasn't just. So something was there. I don't know how I started. I know what it did for me. I know that as a marginalized person, as a brown, I don't know, I, I don't like gender. Looking like a female anyways, <laughs> you know, um, that I was marginalized. 
and I know that I went through racism and I know that I felt that I was ugly and I was powerless and that there that I was nothing and I know that when I learned that I could have a voice and that I could stand up and that I could be part of something to change that to make a better world for people like me that were going through what I was going through and that someday I would have children and grandchildren and what could I answer my grandchildren if they said why didn't you do anything about this and so as I went into it I found a voice I found hope I found that I wasn't ugly I found that I wasn't nothing I found that I was that I mattered and I think that's the only thing I can bring to this because really I don't remember how I got into it okay so looking back on your experiences uh, can you share a memorable story on your journey of defending human rights and where did you have a major learning about human rights well i don't and, know i'm sorry go ahead sorry no no i was just also wanted to say like what is one story that kind of stands yeah. out in yeah. your journey well if you guys have about 10 days i can tell you about a whole bunch of them and I was thinking about this, it's like, what story do I pick? I mean, even writing relations is part of my journey. Even being involved in this group is part of my journey with human, you know, with human rights. And I was trying to think of a pivotal moment, and I remembered one that I won't share because <laughs> it's recorded and everything else. But last night it hit me, and some of you have heard this story because some of you have heard me too much, but I was involved with the United Farm Workers Movement, and that was, you know, protecting immigrants and farm workers. And Cesar Chavez, the most wonderful, amazing person I've ever met in my life, was the leader. I'm going to get into leader later. And there was a big, huge benefit for him at this really famous person's house. And, outside actually in, in the yard and me and my friend worked this table all day with literature and talking to people and we just did it and all of a sudden he was leaving and we saw him leaving but he kept trying to go a certain way and his bodyguards were moving him back and he kept trying to go a certain way and his bodyguards were moving him back and my friend and I are like what's going on like what's he doing and all of a sudden he broke away from them and he started running and I was like what's he doing and he came to our table and he said I want to thank you I saw you all day you were here all day tirelessly you are the movement I'm the spokesperson I'm up there talking so what he said the movement is all the people it's all of us doing the work and I want to thank you for that. And then he demanded to meet all of us that night to talk to us one-on-one -on -one in a circle and share some food. And he was the most humble, amazing person I met. But that always stuck with me that it's all of us. It's not one person. It's not a leader. We're all the leaders. We're all part of that whole. We are all human rights. And so I thought about that last night and said, that was really pivotal because I was really young when that happened. And it was such a message for me that it takes all of us. Okay. And I know that you have um, quite a bit of experiences um, with human rights. Um, do you have any learnings that you think uh, the younger generation of human rights defenders need to know and understand? I think that the younger generation is amazing the younger generation is what gives me hope what gives me everything like i see them and i see the wisdom and the knowledge and the passion that they carry and the understandings that they carry i think the most important thing that i want to tell them is that it's about all of us it's about mutual aid it's about standing together it's about creating movements it's about caring and it's about not being afraid. Don't be afraid. The system is built on fear. 
that it wants to be make us afraid. It wants to make us afraid that we'll go to jail, that we'll lose our jobs, that we'll lose this, that we'll lose that. Don't be afraid. There's a saying that says never surrender. Don't surrender. Keep it up. You are you are the future. You are what counts. Each generation thinks we're the generations our ancestors waited for, and each of us are. Each of us are that change. Each group that comes in makes a better and better change. Do it. Just do it. I'm glad you're there. I'm happy you're there. We need you. We need you. Those of us that are older, our bodies aren't working as well. We're tired. We need you there. You know, you might stumble, you might fall. We all did, but that's okay. You get up. Come to the older people for guidance, to talk. We need to feel valued too. And we can tell you what worked and what didn't work. I used to have this bad habit of saying, ah, you can't do that. It didn't work for us. Well, maybe it didn't, but I guess you got to try sometimes and maybe learn what didn't work. But if you got to do it, do it. And don't judge. We get into so much of this judging and calling out and telling people they're doing it wrong. <laughs> people that know me have heard this, what I always say. I kind of see things like the Berlin Wall. I watched it go down on TV and they were chipping at it this way and they were chipping at it that way and they were chipping at it this way and they were chipping at it that way and then it all came down. So as long as we're doing something, is there a right? Is there a wrong? We're chipping at that wall and we're going to make it tumble. So do it. I believe in you. Go forward. Remember, it's about all of us. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I like what you said about that. When we think that we are the generation that our ancestors need and that, you know, like each generation definitely do have something to contribute, right? And yeah, and so coming into uh, the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and why do you think it's important to celebrate it? Oh, geez, there's so many reasons. One is to remind us that we have rights. And we all have to remember that we have rights and we all have a voice. And it's to remind us that there's tools in place. They might not be the best. They might not have clout behind them, but there are tools for us to fall back on. But when I was reflecting on this, I went one step further. To make change, to make a better world, we all have to return to being human and what real humanity means. And that's not human supremacy where humans are on the top and everything. It means that we, we need to know that we're all interrelated, that everything as humans, we're interrelated to the earth and to the ecosystems and to all living beings, all living beings, animate, inanimate, all species, all species, everything. So when we think about human rights, we must remember to be human so that we can all take care of one another and the world and the species and the ecosystems and the water to remember to be human and so when we think about human rights we think about what does it mean to be human what does it mean to have rights and with rights come responsibilities and so to me it's so important that we remember that there are there is a declaration of the rights of humans and that we take that responsibility and become humans again Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a good reminder of what it means to be. Yeah, I like what you said, like, what does it mean to be a human? And sort of like remembering um, what our purpose is as well. And so then what do you feel needs to happen to right relations and also like building a just Canada? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Well, like I said, first, we need to become human. Second, 
for a just Canada, we, we really, really need to remember how Canada, Canada, so-called Canada, was founded. It was founded on colonialism. It was founded on genocide. And those rights have to be wronged. I mean, those wrongs have to be rated. Oh, my God. Anyways, don't put that quote on social media. <laughs> that was all backwards and contrary. Anyways, and if you're here, and this is the territory of Indigenous people, that has to be rated first and foremost. And as you do that, we rate all the relationships like what writing relations is trying to do bring us all together to write those relations to understand each other as human beings to care for each other to understand that they say the honor of one is the honor of all but the dishonor of one is the dishonor of all so we've got to stand up against dishonor like you said how did you get into human rights knowing something was wrong we need to say stop that's wrong there needs to be change. That's how we need to write things, is to know that there needs to be change. We need to first and foremost have this relationship to these traditional lands, to the traditional peoples, to, to, and then to one another, and to honoring that there will be no mis, more, no more dishonor to, to anybody. Yeah, can you be able to elaborate on what do you mean by relationships to traditional lands? Okay, we need to understand where we are, where we are, and everybody's into land acknowledgements, and it, it it almost makes my head spin. When it first started, I was like, oh yeah, right on, you know, but now it's become performative. It's become yeah, I'm here, so. You're here, and what? What responsibility do you carry from being here? What are you acknowledging? Somebody once said, hey, they're acknowledging whose land they're on, so give it all back. You know, you're actually acknowledging where you are. And so, and it, you need to know where you're walking. You know, need to know whose ancestors are here. You need to know you have a responsibility to that. You need to know that, as I said, we have a responsibility to all living beings on these traditional lands, and we need to know whose they were. Even the animals, like I see them, oh, there's a coyote problem here, or oh, there's a raven problem there, or, we got to get rid of them. Hey, it's their lands. It's their territory, you know? I lived and worked in the Amazon for a long time, and I had this phobia of snakes before I went there terrified of snakes couldn't even see one in a glass case and now i went to a territory where there was snakes and i was kind of leery and stuff and tried to stay away and the first time i went there it was only five days so it was all good but the second time it was three months and I barely went into the water when the whole community went in there. And one time something jumped and I ran up the hill and they said, we'd never seen her run that fast in our lives. <laughs> Cause I was scared that snake was there. Cause there was, that's where the boas live in the water and other snakes live there. And okay. And then one day, first there was a, a coral snake that came up. And this is funny too, because the men were trying to kill it and they couldn't and the women said get out of the way and poof one blow and they killed the coral snake and coral snakes are poisonous but i'm there feeling safe because everybody's around taking pictures so that was my first breakthrough and then all of a sudden this woman came running up from the washroom area crying going i saw the biggest red snake i've ever seen in my life now oh boy i have the community i have my camera i start to run with them and they're going you go back in the kitchen you go sit down. We have a responsibility. My dog's biting my hands. We have a responsibility to you to get you home safe to your family. And I'm like, ooh. And that's an Awahoon woman that's from here, and she's scared of that big snake. Now I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, no. And I used to go out at night to go pee, whatever, go to the showers alone, go everywhere. Now it's like, oh, no. I got three more days here. Oh, no. 
I'd hold my pee all night. I was too scared the snakes were there. And I'd make people walk me to the washroom, walk me to the shower, come with me. Every day I'm praying, grandmother, grandfather's creator, please let me get home. Please let me get home. I only have three more days. And now I'm leaving and I'm on the boat and I'm like, you're an idiot. Those snakes were there every day before you saw them, before you knew about them. They did nothing to you. What is wrong with you? Like, come on. And you're going to have to come back here. This is going to be a long project. And that's the snake's territory. It's not your territory. That's the snake's territory. You don't belong there. The snake does. Make peace. And I'm not the best of friends with snakes, but I have no more, no more phobia. So that's what it is about honoring the lands that you're on. Yeah, I can definitely relate to the Amazon. Um, yep. Especially, <laughs> you know, yes. You know. Yeah. <laughs> especially, yeah, one thing I didn't like about it is the spiders. And they're like the size of your hand almost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see any snakes though. Good, thank, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is actually like the last question. Like, um, so just thinking about uh, like writing relations. That I'm just kind of thinking of thinking about the last questions that I ask you. Uh, just sort of like more like a follow up in terms of what would be. What is your la one call to action to Canadians? Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to say it. <laughs> Burn it down. <laughs> I was joking earlier that I was kind of nervous about coming here and talking because who am I? I'm just me. And it takes all of us, you know, and I'm no better than anybody here. And I said, I'm too nervous. I'm just going to say my whole message is burn it all down. Thank you for coming. Take care. Have a good day. But seriously, we've got to dismantle patriarchy and white supremacy. And we've got to do everything that we can to dismantle it. Because until we dismantle it, we're going to have to write relations. We're going to have to fight for human rights. We're going to have to fight for everything. And, and of course, that all goes back to capitalism because patriarchy and white supremacy are the tools of capitalism. So that's what we need to do is just burn it all down. And, and that's a figurative. I don't want people to say I'm inciting violence because this is recorded. It's figuratively burn it all down. <laughs> all right, did you have any other last words? No, I'm just, just grateful to each and every one of you that are here because you're part of burning it all down. You're part of dismantling it. You're part of writing relations. And it's so good to be with people that are of that same mind because, as I said earlier, it takes all of us. And I want to thank all of you when I was so stumped about where I was going to go today and how I was going to do it and how I was going to answer those first two questions that listened to me that encouraged me, that gave me ideas so that I could do it. And I thank you for the honor of asking me to speak, but it could have been any, each and any one of you. And I'm just glad to be part of a group where we're all going to burn it down together. <laughs>